all inside is good, man. For S, real quick, man. Started out doing the beat battle thing, started out working with a lot of different artists. Um, how did you get your first taste in the music industry? What was your first placement? Um, well, my first placement was actually, man, what was my first placement? Oh, I started doing like just a bunch of uh, uh, mixtapes with a bunch of independent artists. Power was actually my first major label placement, you know, with, with right. Kanye, but prior to that, I was working with a lot of uh, independent cats, uh, Lil Brother, this cat from Arizona named Juice, and, um, and and some more independent cats, but I was grinding for a minute before that, and I also had my group Strength Through Project as well, who I produced for the group and, uh, and kind of built the sound with that group as well. Talk about your road to, you know, getting to this, this power record, first off. Okay, the road to power. Um, where do I start? Okay, I, well, I've been producing for, for a while now. I say I've been producing for about maybe 16 years, uh, maybe eight years full-time as a career now. Uh, you know, I was uh, introduced to uh, my man's Fonte of Little Brother. And I know most of y'all who know Little Brother know who Fonte is, of course. But uh, yeah, so I know some work with Fonte and we started working together. And then from there, he introduced me to uh, Rhymefest. It, it came, a, a situation came up where uh, Rhymefest was needing some production for his album. He was actually needing a, a remix of a song because it, it, for some reason, a song that he was using for his album, he wasn't able to use it because the producer started tripping or something. So he loved the song, but he couldn't use the track. So Fonte called me one day and he was like, yo, S, he was like, my man's Ron Fest, he's needing a song done. He explained the situation to me. And he told me, uh, you know, I, I, the first person that came to mind that could redo this joint was for you, was you. So I was like, yeah, cool, just have him hit me up or send me the acapella or whatever, and I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. So uh, he sent me the acapella, I did the song, sent it to Ron Fest, and Ron Fest called me. And he was like, yo, I'm loving this. He was like, do you have any more uh, beats you can send me for my album I'm at the end of it? So I sent him some beats over, and uh, about a week later, Ron Fest called me, and he was like, yo, S, he was like, I'm at the end of my budget on my album. It's four beats I want, but I can only pay you for two of them. So I thought about it, and I was like, cool, I'm not tripping, you know, go ahead and just pay me for the two, and uh, you can use the four beats, I'll just give you the other two beats. So he was like, cool. So uh, fast forward a little bit, um, you know, his album comes out and uh, a few months later, uh, Ron Fest called me just out the blue and he was like, yo S, he was kind of whispering, he was like, yo S, I'm in the studio with Kanye. He, he said, uh, send me some beats over and if I get the opportunity, you know, I'll try to play, you know, I'll try to play some joints for him. I can't guarantee you that I can play, but uh, if the opportunity arrives, I'll play them for you. So I sent him some beats over. And I didn't hear right back from him. It was probably like a week later, and I get a text from, from Ron Fest, and all the text said was, Kanye is loving your stuff. He says he's about to change your life. So I get this text, and I'm, I'm looking at it and trying to make sure I'm reading it correctly. <laughs> so I get the text, and um, immediately a day after, I get an email, and it's from Kanye's manager, and it was like, Pack your stuff, your flight is leaving to come to Hawaii in three hours. Dang. Wow. So talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> when I get to the studio, it's just Ron Fest and Kanye in the studio. And the first thing Kanye uh, said to me, he was like, uh, he was like, man, you got some tight beats. And I was like, thanks, you got some tight beats too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so immediately he, he plays me power. And, uh, and I'm tripping, I'm like in my mind, I'm thinking like, dang, like Kanye is actually like rhyming over my beat, like this is crazy. So, uh, so he was like, yeah, you know, I want you to just stay up here and just kind of, you know, help me with the album, you know, just kind of be around, you know, and, and, and provide ideas and just kind of vibe out with us. So I wind up staying, I was supposed to stay out there a week, but at the end of the week, uh, he wanted me to stay longer, so I wound up staying uh, another week. 
how did that? How did the situation work out where you actually co-produced the record uh, "Murder to Excellence" with Swizz? How did how did that really come about from that situation? Uh, that was a crazy situation too. We we actually did that song. That was one of the one of the first few songs we did when we went and went to London. It was crazy. We were all in one room. The studio was just one big room. It was uh, Peter Gabriel's studio. He has a studio out in uh, London. And, uh, and we were just making beats all day. That's what we made beats. And Kanye and Jay just was at the mic. We played beats. If they heard something they liked, Jay would start listening to it, walking around the room 15 minutes later. He's at the mic recording. Like that was the one of the most greatest experiences because he really doesn't write. He just walks around the room and he's mumbling words, and then he's at the mic recording the rap. <laughs> but the murder of excellence came about. Uh, it was just basically that. Um, you know, Kanye was like, "Yo, that's what you got." So I started playing beats, and um, I played that beat, and I remember Jay looking at me like, "Like, what's this?" So. Um, he started, he was like, yeah, just put that on loop. So I just had it on loop. He was walking around the room, and 15 minutes later, he was like, okay, I'm ready. Spit his verse immediately after, you know, Kanye put his, his, his verse down on it. And what's interesting is those, I don't know if y'all know the Murder of Excellence, but it's actually like two songs. Yeah, yeah it's two amazing. songs in one. Uh, it didn't really start out like that. They were actually two separate songs. They had did the the, uh, the the Swiss Swiss did the first one, so they had already recorded that one, and then they did mines. But Kanye was listening. He was like, "Man, these sounds so similar." He put both of them together in a session, and in the transition, when he put them together, like everybody in the studio was listening to it. In the tra when the transition happened, everybody just went crazy. Like, "Yo, this is how it's supposed to be. This is this is one song. These two songs are one song now." So that's really how that came about of being two songs. It was just Kanye just trying something, and he put them together. And then the song was called Black on Black Murder, but he was like, murder to excellence now, because it's, this is the representing the murder side, this is representing the positive, the excellent side of where, we, where we're trying to go. So that's the concept and how that song came about. Wow. Oh, yeah, man.